a perfectionist and he wants it to be the best because that's his Olympian spirit. It's truly who he is. He wants to give the best and have people experience the best. And that's why, in my opinion, he is one of the best. Would you please help me welcome the stage from Houston, Texas, three-time Olympian Ruben Gonzalez! All right, here we go, man. Woo! Hey, look at this. Wow! Woo! All right. Even before my first Olympics, I might have been jogging. I might have been lifting weights. I might have been eating dinner. I might have been walking the mall. We know what's going on in here all day long, what I thought about all day long. I was walking into that opening ceremonies in the Olympics. I could see myself walking into that stadium. I could see all those people cheering. It was so exciting. I could look over there. Wow, there's that, that flag and there's those rings and we're here. I look over my shoulder and there's that torch burning brightly. And here's the Olympic orchestra playing the Olympic anthem, my favorite song in the whole wide world. And we're high-fiving each other. Man, we made it. We made it. It was worth it. It was worth it. And you feel the, the cold wind hit your face. And you feel the snow and the tears of joy. And you feel the goosebumps just riding up your face. I can feel the goosebumps right now, guys. I am there. I am. And four years later, when I actually got to go to that stadium, it was just like I imagined it, only a hundred times better. It was awesome. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Thanks. So the littlest guy, he gets on a stationary bike, starts warming up. I go right next to him and I start warming up, right? And I knew he was a boxer, but I want to start a conversation. I want to build some rapport. So I asked him, what do you do? What's your sport? He goes, I'm a boxer. What do you do? I said, I'm a loser. <laughs> <laughs> he went ballistic on me. A loser? Don't you ever call yourself a loser, man. You're a winner. You're a winner. Just like that. Oh, it was terrible. I mean, everybody got off their machines and stretched their necks out. They want to see who the loser was, right? <laughs> Most embarrassing moment of my life, right? I go, no, Lou, just like the bobsled. And I explained it to him, because back then he had to explain it to everybody, right? And finally he gets it. He goes, oh, Lou, sorry, man. I thought you called yourself a loser. Oh, thanks. Now everybody else thinks I am, all right? Well, it turns out this little guy was Vinny Pazienza. He was the reigning world champion lightweight boxer of the world. So he's a champ. If I didn't, if I didn't know who he was, I wouldn't talk to him either, right? Well, when I figured out who he was, I asked him, Vinny, tell me something. Why did you freak out when you thought I called myself a loser? And he goes, Ruben, you ought to know better. Champions don't call themselves losers. See? Winners don't call themselves stupid. They just don't. You walk up to the start, your hands get sweaty, your mouth gets dry, the hair starts standing in the back of your neck. Because you know what can happen down there. Coach gives you a little pat in the back, moves to the side. You test your finger spikes. They feel good. Visor goes down, click, you grip the handles, and it's one, two, three. And you paddle furiously to build up speed, and you lay down. And in no time, you're doing 50, 60, 70, 80 miles an hour. And, and as the speed increases, so does the fear. And the world's just doing this. And you're focused on a spot about 30 feet in front of you, just flying down that track. And people watch us on TV, they think all we do is hold on and pray, right? <laughs> well, if you hiccup, if you hiccup, that could be enough of a motion to cause you to slam against the wall and crash. It's true. If it's your turn to go and you get the hiccups, you're going to have a rough ride. <laughs> and it's not smooth. Because on TV, it's like, oh, look, it's a water slide. How fun. No, it's a water slide on steroids. That's what it is. It's, it's not even smooth. It's bumpy. The whole way down, you're going to see double the whole way. My legs, that's like doing this with a car. That's for emergencies. Hardly ever do it. So it looks like we're just taking a little ride. No, it's nuts. It's crazy. Now, how are you going to stop? You cross the finish line. How are you going to stop? You got no brakes. Well, you force yourself to sit up on the sled, and as soon as you do, boom, boom, you get thrown back with an 80 mile an hour wind. You grip the front of the sled, pull it up, dig your heels in, and slow down, slow down, slow down, stop. And as soon as you step off the sled, the adrenaline rush hits you. The fear hits you like a sledgehammer. I'm never doing that again. I'm never doing that again. I'm never doing that again. Forget it. Forget it. I'm going back to soccer. Soccer's warm. <laughs> soccer's soft. You don't get hurt in soccer. I was a soccer player. <laughs> what was I thinking? Why did I do the luge? Why did I do ping pong or something like that? <laughs> Curling. That would have been good. No. And you want to quit with every fiber in your being because the fear is that strong.
and you want to quit with every fiber in your being because the fear is that strong. Fortunately, there's a walkie-talkie right here because, see, there's coaches up and down the track. And my coach, he's a four-time Olympian and a three-time world champion from Austria. This guy's the best of the best. He's the Michael Jordan of Luge. He's about six foot six, looks like and sounds like Arnold Schwarzenegger. Yeah, he's actually from a village a couple of miles away from where Arnold's from. And, and when he says jump, I say, how high, right? I mean, I respect what he's done, but I fear him a little bit too. But I just had a bad run. I'm fed up. I just pick up that walkie-talkie like, hey, coach, who's Ruben? Ruben, no, come on. Bad news, okay? Nothing good has ever come after not come on. My knees are shaking now for a different reason. He goes, Ruben, no, come on. You must point your toes more. And Ruben, put your head further back. And Ruben, you were so late on curve six, you must feel hot, hot, hot on curve six. And Ruben, relax, relax. <laughs> Be one with the sled. Have fun. Click. Best comment I ever got from coach was Ruben, that was not so bad. <laughs> oh, that's the best ever. When he says that was not so bad, that's party time. I never would have made it to the Olympics without coach. You know what coach does for me? In 15 seconds on that walkie-talkie, you know what he does for me? He helps me take the eyes off the fear and put the eyes back on the dream, the Olympics. You guys are gonna have a bad day once in a while. You're gonna have a bad week. You're gonna have a bad month. And once in a while, you're gonna have a bad year. Everybody does. I have. It's just life. I've had years when it seemed like no matter how hard I tried, nothing seemed to work out. And you start questioning yourself. You start doubting yourself. And you get so close to quitting. Some days you're the windshield. Some days you're the bug. Right? <laughs> but when you're having one of those days, you know, when you're going through one of those life struggles and you just don't know what to do, don't try to go out and figure it out on your own. That's the worst time to make an important decision. You'll always take the easy way out and you'll quit and you'll regret it later. Rather do what I did. Pick up that, pick up that walkie-talkie. Pick up the phone. Call your best friend, your best buddy. Call somebody that loves you, somebody that believes in you. Somebody won't let you quit. Somebody gets you back on that sled. Some, somebody gets you back on track. Because if you quit on your dream, you'll regret it all your life. You will.